I'm Jeff Nimnick. And I'm Rick Paulette. And we're the hosts of The Last Stand. Coyote hunting is my passion. And coyote calls are my livelihood. And together we aim to bring you the best predator hunting tips, tricks, and tactics right down to The Last Stand. The Last Stand, presented by Lucky Duck Predator Calls. We are the masters of deception. Swagger bipods. Shoot with confidence. Shoot with swagger. On X Hunt. Know where you stand. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. Well, we finally made it to the season finale of The Last Stand. Um, the season's been up and down. You know, we've traveled all over. We've been in Arizona. We've been in Colorado. We've been in Nebraska. You know, we've seen some really cool things. We've struggled a lot, and uh, you know, we're hoping that you know this last day of the season we can we can put a, a good day together and uh, really, you know, kill some coyotes, get some aggressive coyotes coming to the call, and just end end on a high note. Well, we're back in the sand hills of Nebraska. It's middle of February. Here with my good buddy Matt again. You guys have seen him on videos before. Middle part of February, it's breeding season. The rancher we're hunting on first thing this morning, he started calving a little bit, so we're hoping to get a few coyotes killed for him. He's been seeing quite a few around his herd, and then uh, the plan is we're gonna hunt here for the morning. Then we're gonna drive over and meet up with another rancher, Tyler, on his place for the afternoon. So weather's gonna be probably the warmest it's been in you know the last two weeks, probably. So uh, you would think the coyotes are gonna be on the move. We got maybe three, four, five inches of snow. Should be pretty ideal conditions. So we're gonna throw a lot of coyote bass sounds at them, breeding fights, coyote fights, pup distress fights, things like that. Hopefully really trigger some of those real aggressive coyotes and hopefully get them bombing in on us. Cattle and coyotes, you know, go hand in hand, especially late in the winter like this. You know, in this country, or probably everywhere in the country, you know, you have to start supplementing your cattle herd in the, in the winter with hay, with what we call cake, which is kind of a protein supplement. And the coyotes know that, they're smart. And, you know, they, they tend to bunch up around that, not because they're, they're wanting to eat cows and eat calves, but more so that they're eating that cake, that protein supplement that's left there. I think when the, when the rancher comes by and strings out the hay for his cows, I think the rodents and stuff move down into there so they can hunt that a little bit easier. Um, the cows have that grass and stuff beat down a little bit, so it's maybe easier for them to catch mice and, and rabbits. The water tanks are all open so they can find water. Just lots of various reasons. And then you throw the cabin on top of it. Um, now you have afterbirth and things like that sitting around, which just adds to the food sources, which actually in can increase the carrying capacity to that area. So it's able to hold more coyotes, which as a coyote hunter, that's exactly what we want. Well, we're getting into our second stand in the morning. About partway through our first stand, we heard a bunch of coyotes howling up this direction. So we got in the truck, we drove up here about a mile, mile and a half hiked up in the top of this big hill right here. Got valleys all around us. Like I said, we're up on top of this big hill, lots of little cover here. Wind's kind of blowing off to our left here. Matt's around the corner covering the, the left side of the top of this hill in case something comes over. I can cover everything to the right here. You know, this time of year, I'm expecting more aggressive responses. So my patience level lacks at times. And, and after, you know, 10 or 12 minutes, I'm usually ready to go. And, you know, what I didn't take into consideration early in the morning that the snow had a little crust on it from the day before it thawed out just enough. And, and anytime you have a crusty snow, I think it's just harder for those coyotes to travel and they can't travel as fast. And, and after about 12 minutes, I was ready to go. Um, I had actually given Matt the all clear sign and he came back on the radio and said, hey, we got a coyote coming. actually saw one coming. Wanted to kill that coyote where he did. I got this hill right here. I figured if he looped around here, he might pop up and see us. So he gave me a good shot right there. Just pumped one right in his, right in his heart. He ran a little bit, but he died tired. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, a little young one. Yeah, he was quartered towards me just a little bit, and I just missed him off the point of the shoulder a little bit. He was a dead coyote running. Nice little furry sandhill coyote. Second stand of the day. Good spot, man. I was about ready to kill the stand about 14 minute mark, and uh, Matt come across the radio and, and uh, said, hey, got one coming. I didn't know where it was coming from, but figure sooner or later one of us would shoot it. Luckily, it was down my barrel. <laughs> So as we're loading this first coyote of the morning, Matt and I start discussing of where we heard all these howls. And, you know, one of the main, probably the closest group of howls was down closer to where we knew the cabin lot was. So we agree that that's probably our next, next best, you know, opportunity to go kill coyotes on the next stand. Two. There's two over there. Well, we're in our third stand of the morning. We bumped a couple coyotes getting in here kind of right now above the cabin lot. They were, coyotes were right down in here. They weren't real spooked. One of them kind of faded off into that tree row. Another one kind of just trotted up into that hill. I saw a third coyote going up this fence line, so still could be another coyote in here. This coyote's responding. Got a bunch of different coyotes howling back at us. Got one kind of over in the hill, got maybe one down by the tree row, a couple on the other side of the tree row. Like I said, for me, this is this helps us put together a game plan. Whether or not we, we kill one on this stand, we got a good idea now where we're, where coyotes are at and what we're gonna do maybe here in the next two stands. I'm sure Matt's up there glassing a little bit. He might be able to pick those coyotes out up there. Could be a couple of coyotes we saw kind of leaving the cabin line too. Just uh, sitting on the hill here about 250 yards straight south of you. So they're straight south of us. They're going to circle down here and they're going to pop up right in front of me. straight in front of me, Sean, on the hill. See him coming off there. Another one to the left popped up. the skyline just a little bit. I got the one on the left. Matt, kill the one on the left. Okay.
didn't get enough. Ah, almost worked out. I didn't get him good enough. I don't think I got that second one good enough. Man, that worked out perfect. I don't know how good I got this one. I got him kind of far back. <laughs> so I'll hit a jog and go see if I can get that one. I don't know. I should be able to see him. Well. Get him on the bottom anyways. Should be able to track him, that looks a good thing. I don't know how far he's gonna go. Sometimes you get him back in the hips like that, I, <clears throat> he'll bleed out a little bit. But if you wanna take uh, Sean or Max and go after that coyote, I'll get your coyote and drag it back to the truck and then we'll drive down. We'll pick you up down there. <clears throat> so I hit the second coyote running not far back. Had two other good shots at him, just couldn't get him rolled up right here in the snow. He made it over that hill. I don't know how far he made it. I don't know how great I hit him. I hit him pretty solid, but I think I got him far back. <clears throat> Hopefully the bullet does its trick and he's, he's bleeding out. I haven't seen him <clears throat> cross that big meadow out there. So Matt's gonna head down and trail that coyote. Should be easy tracking. We should be able to find exactly where he went. I'm gonna get the call, pick up the coyote, <laughs> head back to the truck and we're gonna loop around and. Pretty exciting. I missed him a couple more times, but I, I felt like the shot was pretty good. And a short track job later, Matt found him over the hill. Yeah, he's right here. He's gonna get up now. Yeah, no, mine just stopped and got him and the other one took off and Jeff hit him just a little back and we just had to walk over the hill and he was laying right here. cleaning up after Jeff. Well, if I have to guess, I'm gonna guess this is the female. That other one looked just a little bit bigger. Maybe not, let's see here. Yep, she's the female. Matt put a great shot on her. Hey, less than 100 yards right here. Worked out pretty good. Look her up to the old dragon. Let her back to the truck. A nice male. And all this happened just in time to watch the rancher pull around the corner with his feed wagon and for us to drag the coyotes down there and show them what we just killed. So after we killed that double, I had made a mental note of all the other coyotes we heard howl and we felt the ones off to our left up in the big hill chain were our, were our next best bet to go after. So. We maneuvered the vehicle, we got around, so the window's right, we got set up. Instantly, we get a group of coyotes that light up. Right, what we want. Coyotes hell all around us. There's right below us. These coyotes are probably less than 600 yards here. I'm gonna let them finish howling. I'm gonna go right into it. evil witches. Maybe we'll get them to come barreling right over. But we got a bunch down on the meadow howling too. And you know a minute goes by and we see the first coyote come over the hill at about 550 yards. Running pretty hard. 
three of them. We got three coyotes coming. Hey, Matt, if they bail in, you shoot. We'll let them bail down into the bowl. We need to shoot the one that stops up on the hill right there in the back. They should be on us here within about a minute. Less. They're all stopped. All around that skyline and that ridge. So as these three coyotes are sitting on the skyline, one of them decides to make a break for it. Before he does, he's got to stop and take a bathroom break, and he cleans himself up all the way down the hill. <laughs> you don't get to see a coyote drag his butt through the snow very often. <laughs> it's right here. What left? 150 yards, Matt. And that saddle. And it's just a few minutes later, the coyote actually pops up and probably had the best shot of the, the whole stand right there. But, you know, Matt's trying to err on the side of patience to maybe see what those other coyotes do. The coyote doesn't stick around very long and it trots behind the hill when we lose, lose sight of it. So at that point, I'm just switching through sounds. These two coyotes are still sitting at 550. I know we have a, a third coyote within a couple hundred yards. I'm hoping to maybe get that coyote back for one final shot. I'm switching through sounds. Eventually, I finally go to a sound out of a cat folder called Kitty Kitty, and the coyote pops up almost in the identical place it was four or five minutes earlier. His hand's right here. Got him. Got him. Nice. There we go. Good shot, man. Hey, that officially is a kitty kitty kill. All right. Well, that wasn't the best footage, but that's coyote killing right there. Not always gonna get them laid up right in front of the call. You know, initially one of the coyotes kind of came off the hill, but the other back two checked up. I'm guessing one of those was the female. This time of year, if you can't get the female to bite, it's tough to get him, but we, we did entice this one. We had a shot at him initially, kind of almost just left where Matt finally killed him, and he left, and I don't know if that was a different coyote or a same, what do you think, the same coyote maybe? Probably the same one, but I just come back. Come back, take a peek, I think. I'd switched to a couple different sounds, and I think I'd actually put on Kitty Kitty. <laughs> and he peeked up, and about a head and neck, but I could barely only see the top of his head from where I was sitting, but. Yeah, I could have shoot through some grass, but. Yeah. It thumped him. Three stands in a row. Can't beat that. So after that fourth count of the morning, we get a text message from Tyler that he's finally done feeding. So we pack up out of that area and we, we head to the ranch to meet up with Tyler and Trey for uh, the rest of the afternoon. Boy, these cows are making us work. We've seen coyotes or called in coyotes or bumped coyotes walking into stands on the last five setups we've made. Made a little bit of a run here. It's the middle of the afternoon, hoping to get something going here. We had a pretty dang good morning. Put four in the truck pretty quick and been going on about a four hour dry spell since then. All kinds of coyote tracks in here, you know, from the last you know, four, five, six days from the snow, so should be something still hanging in here. The wind's dying down a little bit, maybe six, eight mile an hour. Matt's way around the corner covering the downwind. I got Tyler and Trey coming up here killing anything that comes right at the call. I'm pointed off to the right in case something comes up from the bottom here. Maybe four minutes into the stand, Tyler spots this coyote 
on the skyline straight out. There he comes. Get ready, Trey. It's going to be yours. Look at this guy. It's making a beeline right here for the baby cotton tail. I'll stop him for you, Trey. Good shot, Tyler. <laughs> Power suppressors right there, that coyote. Trey missed him on that first shot, and that coyote didn't have a clue what was going on. Tyler was on him, ready to roll. It's been about six minutes. Keep calling for a little bit here. So I'd started off playing about four minutes of rabbit, TNT. I'd switched into some juju. That brought him to the top of that hill up there, but I'm guessing it's a younger coyote. He was just a little unsure, so I switched back to baby cottontail demise, which I have on a preset. As you saw, he came barreling right down to that. Right on. Finally, huh? Trey, you were just trying to make Tyler feel good about himself, weren't you? <laughs> like that? Trey's the first one on the trigger. Snaps right past the coyote. Coyote doesn't even know what's going on, but Tyler was quick on the trigger. That quick, the coyote was dead. So the tricky part about a southwest wind is as you get later in the day, especially in the winter, the sun's right setting towards the southwest. So, you know, we, we knew we didn't want to give up the wind. We were going to have to, you know, look into the sun. And when we got into this setup, we knew it wasn't the best. There was really no cover. We knew we were all just going to be sitting on bare side snow hills. But, you know, purposely, I try to get the call as far away and off to the side as I can just to bias maybe a few extra yards that those coyotes, you know, get in that much closer. Well, we bumped two coyotes getting into the stand again. Makes like seven stands in a row. We've either bumped coyotes, seen coyotes, called in coyotes. And yeah, these coyotes aren't far. We got some coyotes howling already. I just ran over this hill over here. We got coyotes howling all over. And these aren't the coyotes we bumped. I like our odds here. We got the wind in our face. We don't have a whole lot of cover. We're kind of just sitting on the side hills, but we'll see if we can get something coming. Let them finish ripping it up. Like I said, this time of year, I really like to do some howling, but not really to calling coyotes. But for this sample fact right here, you kind of figure out where they're at, have an idea where to be looking. And So I start off with a little rabbit. Here he comes, see him straight off. Right underneath the sun? Just straight in front of me, Jeff. There's two of them. Hey Matt, we got two of them coming from uh, southwest up on that flat. We'll let him come clear in, Jeff. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here she comes. All right. We just got to get her convinced.
kill him. Kill her. Kill her. Yep. Too hard. Kill left one. Take your time. Yep. That was further than two, wasn't it? Two? I don't know. I got the one on the right rolled up. Did you? 300. 300? Yeah, she checked up hard. She saw us up here. I saw no cover. Well, <laughs> it almost, we just, this is a problem we've had all day. We're just sitting on these side hills. We don't have a whole lot of cover. That's the coyotes that howled at us. We're kind of tucked into these side hills, but man, they just, if we'd had a handful of yuccas here, we'd had those coyotes right in our lap, I think. But they got to about 300 right out here. That's what they were. And, uh, you know, they just, that one pegged us and you saw its body language. That thing just turned around and took off, but it checked up. We got them stopped and got a shot at the one. I got a shot at the other one, got him on my second shot running, but. Right where I was aiming. <laughs> yeah, it happened fast. Once that female boogered out, we had to make a quick shot. She stopped for us and gave us one good shot. And we made a, made a quick shot. We missed her. I was on the right coyote and it happened fast. I don't think we got it on camera, but I'm guessing yet. I was guessing he was the male. That's how it goes down sometimes. You know, we're feeling good. Two stands in a row, we've killed coyotes. Uh, you know, the sun's our enemy at this point. It's setting fast. We know we only have time for maybe one or two stands left. We make our way down, down the, the hill chain. Tyler's got a, a good spot in mind. Hey, we got one coming. Coming from the call right here somewhere. Said it's right down in front of Matt right now. Where's he at? I don't know. Communication was a big thing on this stand. Uh, you know, Matt and Trey actually spotted this coyote first, so he was able to communicate down to me that we had a coyote coming. Um, he also communicated to me that, you know, they were going to lose sight of this coyote, that it was probably going to be all us. Here he is coming. I'll stop him right there for you, Tyler. Yeah, kill him. You ready? Yep. Oh, jeez. That was pretty sweet. Those bullets coming from the side. <laughs> Little schoolyard brawl. We're about nine minutes in. That coyote came from a long ways. Matt's off to the left. <clears throat> he checked up right here. I think he saw us up here just like the last coyotes. It was really cool watching the bullets go right through that coyote coming from the far left like that. <laughs> I don't know, we sat here for 10 minutes and <clears throat> we were downwind of the call probably. Oh, 150 yards from them guys probably. Anyways, and he popped up and was headed right to the call and he stopped about the only spot that we could get a shot at him and he just held up a little too long. Probably shot him right out from underneath them other guys. But, it should have been a little quicker. <laughs> you see the two bullet paths right there? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's pretty sweet. A little male, maybe? No, a little female. Well, that's a weird bit of mange on her. You ever seen the mange right at the base of their tail like that? <laughs> that's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> Good shooting. So you lost her, and then you saw her again right here. That's the only spot that we had a shot at. She ch yeah, she pegged us up there again, and and uh, Tyler was just getting ready to squeeze it. And <laughs> that was it was awesome. cool because you could see both shots. I mean, yeah. I was right on her close. It was just like whack whack. <laughs> Heck yeah! You know, it's a lot of fun hunting with guys that have the same passion for shooting coyotes that that you have. You know, Matt and Tyler. I've known these guys for a lot of years. I met them through coyote contests, you know, and 
And unfortunately, you know, coyote contests are one of these things that's on the chopping block. And, you know, some of the best coyote hunting buddies I have, I've met through coyote contests. And it's always fun to get with these guys. I don't get a lot of opportunity to come and hunt with them. Um, but uh, late in the season like this, it's kind of a, a, something we always look forward to getting together and, and filming some, some coyotes. You know, this was a great wrap to our season. Uh, we've had some ups and downs. Uh, we brought you guys some, some pretty unique, cool footage this season, uh, but also you got to see our struggles as well, and that's part of coyote hunting. So uh, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate your feedback. Um, we're excited to uh, you know, get back after it next fall and uh, bring you some even more exciting action in season four.